just information that'll make the make the drawings uh, better. Um, And you know, one thing that I that I left out here is, is the left clavicle here. Uh, so we can, so I can draw the scalenius. I'm gonna go back and, and uh, you know, go back to when we did the neck muscles. And, and cause we did a three quarter view. So it, it's just good practice, you know, to go back and fill it in here as, as well. So I left up the clavicle for that reason. And also, uh, so you could see the scapula. This is a scapula. This is on the back, right? And so this, this is right at the front of the torso. And this kind of goes midways. So keep that in mind that it's curving backwards. And let me show you. Uh, I was doing this, this demo for my intermediate uh, painting class. And I, this is a, I like to do a lot of the master copy, right? So this is from based off of this painting by Peter Paul Rubens. And then it, in, it's a painting class, but I try to make the connection between drawing, like the process of, of drawing, especially the way that these artists uh, from the Baroque period, the way that they would draw, how they're the colors that they would use for their paintings related to the colors they would use for their drawing. And as I was working on this, you know, I, I was, uh, I noticed some things, you know, uh, I had, I've been aware of this painting, but I had never made a copy of it, a, a drawing. And uh, so like all this anatomy that we're going over, uh, you can see it on, on these drawings and on these paintings. Uh, and you see how it, it affects the knowledge that the artist possesses of the anatomy, how that informs the, you know, the painting. Uh, and I'm hoping you know, to get to the part of the pectoralis muscles. But you see here on this area, and I did on the drawing, uh, you know, there's, the shadow, the shadow mass here, it's uh, it's warm, right? It's, it's, you see a lot of orange, a lot of reds. On the, on the stomach, it's got like a little pouch there. Uh, and then on some areas, it gets a little, it gets not a little, but it gets a lot cooler. You see the hues a lot more black, what I try to do here. And there's a reason for that, you know, see like the breast is, the pectoralis area is a lot warmer. And he's emphasizing that it's more fleshy. And then here, because the skin is right to the right next to the bone, uh, it's a lot. The color is a lot cooler, you know. And so, I mean, he's aware of all this anatomy. It's his painting this, you know. It's got very clearly defined, you know, the, the rib cage. You see that he pretty he cuts it really clear clear there, which what I tried to do when I was copying the, the drawing. And then you have this form, the external oblique. So this, this is what I'm trying to show you by going over all this, all these muscles. And then in regards to the neck, so you see the sternocleidomastoid, the the hyoid, part of the scalenius. And you see this, see that angle there? 
that is the levator scapulae. So all those muscles that I've been going over, like, you know, these artists were aware of it. And you can only get to a certain point just by looking at, at, a, at a figure and draw it and paint it. So you have to, to draw out more information, you've got to do what we're doing, like sit down and try and figure out the muscles that are underneath. So then you can exaggerate them or, you know, or you can emphasize them or change the color in those areas where you, where you know that there's muscles and, where, and subdue the colors where there are no muscles. So I'm, I'm gonna, I'm going to move the camera down a little bit. And I've got the rib cage. I wanted, I just wanted, wanted to demonstrate some, some things here on the, The rib cage, uh, very very fascinating form, very fascinating structure. And the way that I that I've drawn it here, uh, it is it's just uh, the rib, you know, the ribs. Then you've got part of the rib where it's uh, cartilage. That's why I painted that with. Uh, some yellow. Uh, now, another another structure here that is uh, that is going to help us uh, in understanding this is uh, just like when I when I drew the back and I drew that uh, spinal ligament. Uh, see, like here, like you've got the the top of the sternum. And then you've got the clavicle. So the transition from one form to the other is very kind of a, very uh, abrupt, you know, like here and then. But in, in, and you don't see this in a lot of the, a lot of the uh, bigger drawing books. Uh, but there's, you know, from here to here, there's, uh, there's like a cap. A ligament, a type of that smooths out the the transition between the two bones. Looks the ligament is connected tissue, and I've simplified it here. You know, it's, but you want to think of something like that, so that see now it looks like the the form flows better from one to the other. And you have this caps here also uh, in, in the, to connect the, the cartilage portion to, uh, to the sternum. And uh, I mean, I'm, I'm always, you know, for, for the class here, I, I, draw no, I draw my notes. I've got several notes of, about the anatomy that, I, that I've done throughout the years. And every time I, I do them, there's, uh, you know, there's more information that I, that I learn. And then from drawing the model and, and painting the, painting the model. Uh, about a year ago, before the whole pandemic, you know, came, uh, and 
I was doing a painting of one of the female models we have here. And she was very thin and she had a great torso that you could see very clearly her, you know, her rib cage. Uh, and you could see right on the sternum, you, you, you could see this, you could see these forms. You know, little bumps where the ribs came into contact with the, and I, I just, I had never learned about these forms, you know, like I can make sense of them. And then I kept looking up, researching, reading about the structure. And the mom, I mean, some of you might have, you might remember Nancy, she was very thin, very thin model. She, and uh, also, uh, there are some people that have very thin skin. Not only are they thin, but their skin is very thin. And you can see all this extra detail that you don't see on some other people. So that's what I'm I'm doing there, just trying to uh, fill in you know, this this in between a transitional form, and I try and get a little bit of shade in there. Is it in a way that makes now like the whole form kind of flow together more as opposed to how it was you know, before. Mm -hmm. And as we're going to start adding, you know, muscles on this, on over these, over these bones, uh, you don't want to forget. You, you want to number these. So this is you know, one, two, three, four. And see the fifth rib, where does it fall? You see what, what line is this? What head measurement is this? The second or the near? Yeah, the second head measurement. So that's another way you can use the, you can utilize the uh, proportions. So there's a total of, of uh, 12 ribs, but only 10 are attached up here. There's two that are floating. And you want to number that. You want to number that. You want to put a highlight because you see that on on individuals. You see this. So I, yeah, I go in with uh, some yellow, make up this, make a circle, then outline with the chart one, then add a high.
And I was only able to find this information not on, on any of the art of the artistic anatomy books. Uh, that was like a medical dissection book and some dissection websites that I could. I'm gonna go, go on the neck, on the neck area. I'm just thumbing through my notes over here. I'm gonna use, I've got, see, I've got this also, this note, these notes here. Uh, so I'm gonna have these here next to me. So I'm gonna I'm gonna build this, you know, build it up from the from the back forward. Uh, so you know you've got uh, you've got here. You know, we just go from the very back, the the muscles, you know, starting from the back and then building forward. I'm gonna start off with the, the levator scapulae. That's that's gonna that's gonna give you uh, see I've, I've gone ahead and, and drawn the outline of, of the neck here. So you know that muscle I do this. Let me show you the, the other notes here. Remember this, this was a side view. You see, it went from, uh, from the scapula. You know, to the fourth. From the first to the fourth. Uh, and here, let me number, I'm gonna number also The number of these. This is you know, this is C seven, C seven, six, five, and that's four. And see, I, I removed the clavicle from this side because 
I'm going to show you this here. And remember this one, when we did the anatomy of the face, remember this, what this muscle does. Now from this point, this, it kind of folds like a ribbon. And of course, we're, we don't see the attachment to the first uh, transverse process of C1, but that's what happens up here. It goes all the way up. Remember that the, the base of the neck is, uh, of, the, of the cranium lines up with, with the nasal cavity. So do this. See that, this is how it, it, it looked from the back view. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna emphasize that, you know, that twisting Now I'm at a, I'm at a meeting, I'm a little too wide. And like I've mentioned, you know, I'll go back and make some, uh, some adjustments. I really enjoy the, the combination of the, like in that, that demo that I was doing for the drawing class, for the painting class. You know, just using uh, the red chalk and and the charcoal. So this would be in shadow. We need to show that this is holding over the highlight. And only on, on this bottom one, you see that where it's connected. The, the attachments, I mean, it's like, a, like fingers. I'm going to think about it. This is the levator scapulae. So in Spanish, it translates into more understanding whether you can understand it more. El levantador de la escapula. That's what it translates into.
So this one attaches to scapula and from C1 down to C4. I'm gonna separate the jawline there. And I'll just sketch it on this every line and just put a you see it has this you know pyramid like structure. These muscles of the neck here. These are the deepest ones. Um, in second. And we did, we drew these, these are the, uh, the scalenias, which are, which it's, a, it's one group of muscles. There's the anterior, middle, and the posterior. There's three, three portions. I'm gonna try and draw, draw them also. And I have here somewhere. So this, this is the lavator scapula. So overlapping this, uh, you would have the, the scalenius, the posterior uh, portion. I'm gonna use this to help me, help me draw it. Someone's coming in here. And because this is gonna be the, the deepest one, uh, I'm just gonna draw it with pencil here. But it, connect, it connects to the, as you can tell here on this one, we're gonna see just this portion. So it connects to the second rib. And it goes on the second rib here. Up to, C4, the transverse process of C4. So it overlaps. And I'm, this one in front of the later step to be the one that we just did here. I'm gonna try and give it a little bit more, more volume there. Attach to C4 all the way to C6, the transverse process. I'm not gonna draw it in. This is where you see it. 
little hat just to make it stand out more. I'll add it to the other right. Just for now. Look at the shading here. And the, the middle portion, it goes from the from the first rib starting here. And this one goes all the way to C1. So this one, this one is gonna cover up everything. And then when it goes, you know, from C1 all the way to C7, but this is this is the middle portion. And then you have the, the one that is closest to us, the anterior, which goes it goes from The first rib to the to the C six and all the way up to four. So these two forms, the anterior and the middle one. Become almost one here. Those are the attachments. To bring it on, I'm gonna put some yellow here. To give it that mass. So from C3 all C C3 all the way to C6. This is a little bit of the posterior one. And I want to put some glue here just to push the levator scapula to push it back. I'm gonna turn it purple. This should give us the idea that there it's being overlapped. And see our this floating head now starts to become attached to, to the rest of the of the rib cage. I 
and then one other structure. If you guys remember what we had here, we had the uh, the breathing apparatus, the esophagus, the trachea, and the esophagus. You know, one for eating, one for breathing. But that's what I I want to I want to work on. So these are the scalenes, anterior portion. That pretty much covers the middle portion and the posterior portion. This is where you see the posterior portion down here. The first two go on the, on the first rib, the third one comes down. Give it some cover to it. Move this a little bit to have some space here to show you some uh, some views. So remember, you had you had here the trachea. It goes down to the lung. Just keep it there. It's a little bit of white. To emphasize that it's hollow and look at the shading there on the inside. Very simplified view. Put highlight on the edge there. Something like that. And this or oh, this other line was just kind of just getting me started with the sketching of it. So that's that's the trachea. And you had the thyroid cartilage on there. You had the the hyoid and the cryoid. And this other view as well this this notes here. And so, you know, this, this highlight that I did here, you know, becomes, remember the, the hyoid is uh, kind of like a U-shaped, has some little teeth.
if you think back, this is the attachment to the digastric muscle. And then wrapping, wrapping around it, you have the, a little bit below this, you have kind of like a butterfly shape. This is the thyroid cartilage. So the Adam's apple. And it's called the Adam's apple because it's more prominent in men, but women also have it. And at, at this scale, it is uh, at this size of this drawing, uh, this is much details I can put on this. And then you have the, the cryoid, which is like this, like a U, another ball here. It looks like some little cartoon monster. Think of that like the smile or the mouth. Do you want me to draw that as well? Yeah, you should you should draw this. I mean, this is giving you some information. Uh, and this is like a practice run before I put it on here. Just so you don't get lost uh, in what I'm about to do over here. And of course, this is gonna, it's going to cover up It's gonna cover up the uh, my nice drawing there of of the cervical vertebrae. So I want to take a photo before I I lose this. I'm going to do this primarily with uh, this dark brown, darker uh, reddish brown. 
And on this view, I mean, I, on this, I kind of drew it higher. I should have done it lower, but the, the, uh, this bone, the cryoid is gonna be right under the, under the chin. How about I use, I'll use some white here. You know, white paint is, is what gives, uh, what gives you opacity. And this, you know, branches out into the two portions into the into the lungs. So the, the phase that I used for this guy was uh, David, Michelangelo's David. Try to bring out this tip. Look at the charcoal. All kinds of drawing instruments here. So this is the, the hyoid and this is the cryoid. So remember on either side here, you had you had a muscle going from 
the high all the way down to the top of the sternum. Which has a very easy name to remember once you memorize the names of these structures. So because it goes from the hyoid to the sternum, it's called the sternal hyoid. I'm gonna do this pink. And I started, of course, with a cylindrical uh, a cylindrical tube-like structure. Now, these, there's a couple of muscles here that start to make it look more, more boxy. Over here. See, it goes behind the clavicle. And then there was right right behind this, there's a, a going up to the sides, starting on the hyoid. <clears throat> this is the homohoid. So this way you can see it more clearly. And this goes all the way to, uh, starts up here. It goes somewhere and attaches to the scapula. Right now, so you can see more. Make it more clear than when I outlined the charcoal. Here. That's what it that's what it does.
It'll actually do this. I think I dropped a little too much here. It overlaps the scalenius. Just so that it's not so green with a little bit of red over it. So it looks more natural. This is the omohoid. That looks more organic. Now, as, as we continue <clears throat> to move down here, we're going to, we're going to do a deep muscle that is the pectoralis, pectoralis minor, which goes under the pectoral, under the pectoralis. And it uh, it'll start off on the on the inside of the scapula. Now this you got this form. Just to separate this form here. And also on this side. So in this view, I'm gonna put some shading here to separate this. See this distance. This is the is the scapula, this part here. This is the the humerus. But I'm adding white to it. I'm adding some sh shading here to get the idea that they're that even though they're the same form, they are you know separated. They're different structures.
So see this up here that attaches to the, to the clavicle, this is the acromion process. Anytime you have a, it's like the mastoid process. Anytime you have a growth or like a outgrowth from the major form of a bone, it's called a process. Oh, and also one thing I, I forgot, but see like what I did here with this ligament that unifies these two forms, there would also be one here between those two. Uh, so that's the acromion process. And the other one is also a process. This is the coracoid process. There are two cord growths out of the major bone form of the scapula. And that is where, on this where I put the Y. That is where the pectoralis minor is going to attach. And so it attaches from there. I'm going this side first. From here to the third rib. To the third. See some. If you have this distance from where you've got the, the cartilage and this, this edge somewhere in the middle here, from the third, and it goes it'll go down at an angle here. You know, almost cutting these in half down to the fifth. And it's, uh, okay. it does this. And of course you have it on both sides. So this portion comes up to the, to the third rib. And then it kind of cuts this in half all the way down to the fifth rib. And because it has, you know, these three attachments, of course, it'll, it'll do something like, you will have three shapes. And you, know, you wanna keep in mind also that in between the ribs, there's, there's inner costal muscle. I'll fill it in with, with some color in a little bit here. Just a little bit of paint now. I'm gonna add a little bit of highlight here. One thing I've noticed in the pictures of dissections, there's this this white 
the muscle gets wide closer to the to its connection. Just again to add opacity, I'm gonna put <clears throat> some white. Now trying to separate it, and it's it's like a cone, cone shape. One time in a, in a drawing class, we had a we had a model when I was a student many years ago in, in the, I was getting my master's. There was one of the models and he had he was missing. I mean, there's all kinds of variations in, in the anatomy of, of people, you know, but he was missing the pectoralis major. So you could, he had his, you know, he had, and he, he had it missing on, on the right side. So you could see just the skin over the, over the uh, rib cage. You could see the rib cage very clearly, the bones. And then you would see this, you know, that structure. And then of course you had like the rectus abdominis and other muscles. But on this area, he did not have the covering. It was, it was uh, pretty interesting to see that. Kind of interesting, the mutations or just or the just. I remember also reading that there's people that have a uh, inside all the organs flipped over. Like instead instead of having the heart on the left side, they have it on the right side. The liver is instead of being more on this side, it's on. There's all kinds of variations. Yeah, that I'm not necessarily bad, but they're just variations on the anatomy of people. And I, I'm just gonna draw it on this side again because this, you know, these drawings. I mean, they're like, kind of like dissection drawings, uh, biological, anatomical illustrations. Uh, when I do the pectoralis major, of course, I'm gonna cover it, and I just want this reminder of what's underneath.
And then remember on this side, we want to have like uh, 40 minutes. I want to do, I want to draw this, some of these muscles on the side view, because that's where you see them. push this back. And also on the side view, you'll see how the distance between this, the attachments on the rig, and then the insertion on the coracoid process. And you know, remember this, this is the outline of the levator scapulae. And I'm gonna do the sternocleidomastoid just on this side, because I wanna cover all this. But this form would overlap these on, on this side. And it's, uh, comes in here on the top of the, of the sternum. Overlaps the like this pink one, the sternal highway. Got some white to add opacity there. See, now we would be more human. Remember this, this part of the sternal cleidomastoid is more cylindrical than this other portion here is, uh, is flatter. Can you use, I'm going to use a little bit of blue. Just push this down a bit.
and then look at a lighter value here, comes closer to the top. But it's the same muscle. It's a flat portion that attaches to the clavicle, a more cylindrical portion that attaches to the top of the sternum. And this overlaps all of these forms. So, so yeah, this side, we'll leave it like that for now. <clears throat> and I wanna maybe add some brighter white here for this. Remember, this is closer to us then it kind of slowly curves away. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my drawing. So I'm gonna move this guy. And get the other, get the side view here. And see, you you want to put you want to put a lot of yellow here and white, especially here because this this is a dominant form in figure drawing. See this arch. This is the costal arch. You will we'll put uh, muscles on top of this, but you you don't ever want to lose uh, you don't ever want to lose this form. Kind of opening here. So this guy. So yeah, on, on this side, you see this gap here. In that gap, that's where you would have the, the levator scapula. I would, I would fill that in there. And this is that ligament, that nuchal ligament. And part of this, I wanna, I wanna cover part of that because remember, we did these here, and these were overlapping uh, the semispinalis. This one is underneath the splenius capitis. So I want to I want to fill that in. Thank <laughs> you. 
So here this, you know, this green one. I'm just gonna put a little bit of blue in here. So this is a semi-spinalis. So from the side view, it would it would cover up the the nuclear ligament. So I want to make a little bit of a of a green. Let me just change the coloration there. You can tell the difference a little bit better. So the semi-spinalis under the splenius capus. So I think a little bit more purple there. It's a, a cooler color. And now this one is a little bit warmer. And then later on, we'll put on, you know, Covering maybe half of this form, it will be the trapezius. And that'll be later next week. So I, I do want to show you, and again, you want to number these. You want to number your, you want to number the ribs. And see on, on this view, see that this is, remember this is the second head measurement, right? At the fifth rate. But then it, it goes up. And then the second head measurement falls here, like at the bottom of the scapula. And then this rib is the seventh rib, but it goes further down. So you know, using those head measurements, you can start to kind of locate yourself. So yeah, the one I, I want to do on this view is the and you'll see how how far back it goes. This is gonna be the pectoralis minor. And see the let's say from here in the front of your chest, 
to the middle of your chest, probably like four or five inches, maybe less, depending how how muscular or or, or your the you know the the natural built of your of your anatomy. So th those are minor distances in the grand scheme of things. But if you're aware of those, you can you can push you can push that in your in your drawings. And so you know, once again here, I'm, I want to emphasize you know, this structure here. And this is this, this, the acromion process, again, here becomes the spine of the scapula. It's a continuation of the spine, this one here. Darken it to separate it. See that that white and the, and the dark outline kind of creates more depth. This one over here. It's a little bit further in. So this is the the coracoid process. And from there, uh, you're gonna have the attachments. Remember it goes to the, to the third rib. Let me get a darker charcoal. Goes all the way down to the fifth. And see this, you got this attachment, which gets overlapped. Uh, Because it attaches to, to those three ribs that have now these three forms here. This form of the fifth. This form of the, of the fourth. And this one here. Of the third rib, but you want you, you want to think of this as like a cone. And when we put the the pectoralis uh, major over this. You see this gap here, even though the pectoralis major, the, the portion that attaches to the sternum is gonna go over the ribs here and also the portion that attaches to the clavicles. It's relatively thin so that you see this kind of protrusion, the rib cage is like coming out of the, out of the chest, out of the pectoralis. The mass of the pectoralis is gonna be made here. And sometimes you you can with your the palm of your hand, you can kind of pat yourself there like the and you can feel the rib cage here. No matter your weight, you can feel this pretty close to your skin. 
but the mass of the breast, you know, the muscle mass and then the fat accumulates on this area. So you have like this kind of inverted triangle. Um, the rib cage kind of coming out of the pectoralis muscles. And as I develop the drawing later, I'll try and emphasize that that creates a lot of interest for me in creating depth and dimension in that part of the, part of the anatomy. So, see, this, this is, this will be closer to the front of, of the torso of the chest, and then this is going back. I'm going to put some white. And because this this is gonna this I'm gonna cover it up and I'm trying to layer it in a way that the build up of the build the building up of the pigment won't interfere as much, but will help me in building up the form. So I'm gonna leave a lot of this white here. I'm just gonna put a little bit of shading here with this darker brown. Pectoralis minor. So I'm going to keep it kind of pale for now. Maybe one more muscle.
So we'll, we'll do this one. This, again, this is the levator scapula, but from the side view. We'll make this one. See, and here you see the attachments that goes from the C1, the transverse process of C1 all the way down to C4. And I might, just to show that it overlaps. It's going to attach. And so it attaches. I think it's white, it'll stand out more. This. And then from, from the top here, we'll use yellow here. Because the, the yellow should make it, should make it look like it's uh, closer to us. And this one goes to four, like the, right here. You see this, this is closer to us, but it's lower, it's at four. This one that's attached to one is farther away, but it's higher. So I'll, I'll keep the, uh, I'll put yellow here, so that the warm color will make it look like it's standing up. Over with put some red here. Outline is black here to separate it. So see, it's it's behind the middle portion of the of the scalenius.
You see this, this gap that we ended up with here, it's actually, it has to be filled up with this one. This is the posterior portion of the scalenia, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna fill that in there. Nice and white on the clavicle uh, because this this is definitely closer to the skin. So these are the muscles that are missing on our first drawing of the anatomy of the face. You see that it has this very nice rhythmic you know, flow to the. And then you'll see like the serratus muscles. There's this wonderful rhythm, it's like a plant, you know. So these are the serratus. So these go this way and then. Trying to capture the anatomical beauty. Uh, hey, sir, uh, I'm going to have to leave already. You don't have to. You can always stay. No, but it's, uh, yeah, it's time. So, look, yeah. what, what I want you guys to do take a picture of, of the neck, this view, and take a picture of the neck. Uh, and of the, of the pectoralis minor on the front view and upload it to your blog and I'll check it that way. Uh, and post it today so that I know you did them today. And of course, when you post it on your blog, it, the date gets reported on there. Because uh, I think it's already, some people have to go. So but we all have to go. All right. So if you guys don't have any questions, this is the last mouse I'm going to do today, and uh, I will see you guys next week. And I'll post the homework uh, tomorrow. And remember to what, you know, if you need instructions in regards to the proportions, look at those videos. Look at the video that I just posted. Of course, those you can fast forward and move back. Uh, okay, so that's it, guys. We got to go. I'll see you next week. Sir, uh, you're going to post the homework tomorrow, right? The homework, yeah. I got to look at the book and decide which poses uh, are best for that, for that assignment. Okay. It'll be more standing front view and, and standing back view so that I can, so you guys can keep practicing fitting. It's going to be. Go ahead. Is it going to be. The, the the drawings we did on Monday where they're like posing and we just draw the outlines of them. They yeah it won't it won't be any any shady no. But it'll be like you know four or five different drawings. Just to to really ingrain the the proportions in you. But yeah no shady. We'll shade on uh, we'll shade next week. We'll do a whole a whole drawing from start to finish with the shading.
All right. Okay. Uh, you... Sir, I had a quick question. All right. Um, I checked uh, to see if I was all, uh, how am I doing with my grades and everything? And it says that I have like some missing assignments, but I remembered I turned everything in from like the day or two that I missed. Yeah, so, uh, I'm gonna go back and- I uh, wanted to know if- I, what is your average? If you don't mind saying, is it good or bad to say? I don't bad? mind. It's a 62 right now, which isn't good for me. Like. No, what, what, once we fix it all, it's probably those zeros that are bringing it down. But I think you, for a while there, you missed out, but I think you're probably got, you're all caught up. And we'll get you, we'll get it all fixed. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Okay, to, all right. Yeah, we'll get it all fixed. Uh, just hang in there. It's like today, again, like another meeting for these, we're hiring somebody for teach photography and they, those mm. committee things, just like, a, just a drag, man. <laughs> it's like part of the job. <laughs> it's just like I know what you mean. Uh, yeah, I want to get it taken care of, and you, they take a lot of time. Point, so just yeah, don't worry about it. I mean, but you know, show up to class. <laughs> All right. Of course. All right. All right. Take care. You too. Have a, have a nice uh, night, sir. Yes. Yes, Carlo, you too. And, and are you, you're going to post the, the homework on the announcements, right? Correct? Yeah, I'll, I'll put an announcement there. All righty. Thank you. All right. No problem. Sir, I have a question. One more. All right. Um, do we have to post the, the neck muscles? We post it on our blog, but do we have to share the blog link on on the group blog or are you no, just going to no, check I, out? I can just go to the old link and then just uh, find your latest posting. Okay, so we don't have to share it with the class. You'll, you'll find it through our blog. Yeah, I'll find it through your blog. Okay, I posted it. All right. Bye, sir. Bye, guys. Bye, sir. Bye.